Thank you. Okay. Senator Moran. Uh, thank you, Chairwoman. Uh, I'd first like to acknowledge, as several of my colleagues have done, the purple in the audience. Uh, thank you much for your presence uh, and for the rounds of conversations you've had in, with me and my staff and with others across the Senate. Uh, I hope that you know that your, your efforts on Capitol Hill uh, do matter, and you should take great pride in the fact that they have mattered. This subcommittee in particular, it has new leadership this year, but I have no doubt but what will make every effort to prioritize the funding of medical research and in a sig significant way prioritize the funding of research to find the cure, delay, the, the drug that uh, so desperately is needed by Alzheimer's patients and their families. Uh, so thank you for your advocacy. Uh, it is a, something that I would speak on behalf of my colleagues that we're all proud of ourselves, uh, although the real credit belongs to you and many others for the success, a bipartisan success that has occurred now I think for five years, maybe we're on our sixth year, in which uh, those of us still on the committee and those who preceded us uh, have made certain that this topic uh, is uh, something that matters to us because it makes such a difference. Mr. Secretary, um, the strategic national stockpile. Uh, you and I had this conversation in last year's uh, appropriation uh, process, uh, and I want to ask a couple of questions. Uh, I understand, and you indicated in your testimony a year ago, that you understand the importance of maintaining a strategic national stockpile. I appreciate that acknowledgement. Uh, this committee has uh, acknowledged as well uh, that there is a need for the funding for that stockpile to be uh, increased, but we've been hesitant to do so because to, we've been hesitant to have a significant, meaningful increase because we don't have the information that we need to do so. Um, we don't know, how, we've been unable to do oversight because of lack of information. And so I would ask you or the Ad Administration for Strategic Preparedness and Response if you would provide me, this subcommittee, a detailed and comprehensive update on the SNS since COVID-19 depleted it. Is that something that's doable? I, I don't see anything in the request that would be uh, confidential or non-disclosable, so let me get back to you, but I think we can respond. And the second part of that, uh, the second question in the part of this conversation is, uh, how can ASPR work better with Congress, and specifically this subcommittee, subcommittee to achieve our mutual goal of a well-stocked and carefully maimed stockpile? Thank you for the question. By the way, I, I hope that your staff will follow up with us because um, the work that ASPR is doing, uh, our, agent, our administrator and the Agency for Strategic Preparedness and Response has been phenomenal. If I were to ask anyone in this room, can you name me the date when the, there was a warp speed uh, trans, uh, transition from the Department of Defense on COVID to the Department of Health and Human Services. I doubt there's anyone in this room who could tell you when it happened because it was seamless. And it's because the folks at ASPR handled this with professionalism. They've been doing this work since 2021 when they took over after Warp Speed transitioned over to HHS from DOD. And it has gone very well. I mentioned close to 700 million shots in arms as a result of the COVID vaccine. I would love to have uh, Administrator Don O'Connell speak to you and your staff directly or to any members of the staff because we have depleted the stockpile. And we, we need to get back to, for example, when we did MPOX, monkeypox, we used a lot of the smallpox vaccines that we are storing in the event smallpox should ever hit this country. Because that vaccine also worked against the monkeypox, against MPOX, we started using some of that uh, vaccine. We, we need to replenish that. We got no money to address MPOX. And so we took that out of the stockpile to replenish those smallpox vaccines will cost money, but we need to. And so I absolutely want you to have sight because neither you nor I wants to be caught flat footed if we find that our stockpile is depleted. So we will follow up. Uh, thank you. I, um, I appreciate you expanding. Uh, certainly COVID uh, was an important component of the necessity for vaccines, but this is broader than that. Yes. Uh, you mentioned monkeypox. There's a whole array in today's dangerous adversarial 
face, uh, circumstance we face in the world, uh, we need to be fully prepared. My final question, Chairwoman, is um, ASPR recently released its industrial base uh, expansion platform. This is the desire that many of us have to see that we are not dependent upon some other country yes. to provide us with the necessary yes. ingredients or product to be stockpiled. Uh, do you think there's a similar pathway to increase the opportunities for smaller biotechnology and manufacturing companies to offer their supplies to SNS? The answer is yes. And by the way, Senator, great question because it points out why it is so essential that we receive money the 20 to $30 billion that we're asking for with regard to COVID, because that will help us replenish uh, some of the accounts that were depleted as a result of COVID, including, of course, the stockpile. Remember that the stockpile maintains supplies of product uh, and material that expire. And if we don't keep those supplies replenished, we may have something in our storage units, but it really won't serve the true purpose. And so there's so much that goes on that goes well beyond COVID, as you said. And absolutely, one of the things we love to do as we were trying to get the dollars, the $80 billion request for COVID to replenish funds would have given us a chance to actually start working on domestic production because ASPR could have focused some resources on actually trying to you know, stand up that domestic production. But we're so caught right now in trying to just backfill our, our, our reserves that it makes it tough to even consider trying to help domestic production really launch in this country. I hope my conversation uh, indicates to those who are listening to you and I have this conversation that there is a, uh, there's an interest in finding uh, ways to be helpful. 150%. Thank you. Well, thank you to my colleagues.